A 16-year-old high school student named Adam is sent to the ER after fainting during class. The RN questions him about his eating habits after seeing that he has had low blood sugar levels. Adam admits that for the past few days he has been only getting 3 hours of sleep a night and consumes around one meal each day as he is stressed about final exams. He also reveals to the nurse that he has been exhausted and anxious for a while with periods of sadness all relating to the fear of failure in school. Throughout the interview, Adam would often try to cover his wrists while looking worried and avoiding eye contact with the nurse. To make Adam feel more comfortable, the nurse offers him a blanket which develops a more trustworthy relationship between the nurse and the client. As the RN gets to know Adam, he opens up to the nurse and reveals some of his hobbies, specifically his passion for superhero action figures. He explained to the nurse that when he's stressed out or anxious, he likes to play with action figures. To comfort him, the nurse makes some room accommodations. The nurse is still noticing strange behavior. She then finds out that Adam experiences suicidal thoughts from time to time and has had failed attempts at suicide. Adam does not know how to deal with it and doesn't have anyone he can trust with this information. Adam is anxious to reveal this information to his parents as he comes from an Asian background which sees mental health as a stigma which should not be talked about. In order to improve his mental health, it is important to include the parents in the conversation. So with Adam's consent, his parents were called into the room. The nurse then takes a moment to sit down and talk to the parents about the scientific facts about mental health. After meeting with Adam, the RN has a new perspective on how mental health affects the youth. She is also eager to learn more on how to improve mental health education for adolescents. In this scenario, the nurse showed a client-centered, strength-based care approach. As Adam's strengths are his coping mechanisms, the RN relates to Adam's hobbies and places action figures around the room to make the environment more comfortable. This will help him feel at ease about opening up to the nurse. In addition, trying to include the family in the conversation will allow the patient to be less anxious once the RN educates the family on the drastic toll it can take on a person if not addressed properly. Moreover, to make sure the client has control over their care, the RN made sure not to interrupt the conversation and add in their own opinions on mental health but instead ask questions in a therapeutic manner to further the call. With consent, the RN brings the parents into the room. If the patient did not want his parents in the room, as Adam is of a mature age, the RN can suggest to the physician about referring the patient to a therapist or psychiatrist. In addition, the RN can educate the patient on community services for mental health. For example, CMHA Mental Health and Addiction Crisis Centre in London, Ontario. In relation to emancipatory knowing, the RN recognizes that there needs to be more awareness regarding the stigma towards mental health as it is an increasing concern for today's adolescent population to be under tremendous stress from academic pressure, there is a greater chance for the youths to have some type of mental health issues such as anxiety, depression, or even eating disorders. It is important that education on identifying and dealing with mental health issues are addressed in schools. In order to improve mental health education in school, the RN can sit in on public health meetings in her community to advocate for changing mental health education given to adolescents, as well as around creating easier access for students in regards to mental health services. For instance, the RN can volunteer in helping with coordinating activities for schools in her community in relation to healthy eating or even physical activity that promotes mental well-being. During the interaction between the nurse and the patient, the nurse uses therapeutic communication to further understand and develop a relationship with Adam. This can be seen when the nurse actively and attentively listens to Adam when he starts to open up about the situation. To ensure that the relationship does not have a power imbalancement, the nurse interacted with Adam at an eye-level position by sitting down during the conversation. 
The nurse also maintains the same tone of voice and facial expression to show Adam that the environment is non-judgmental and the purpose of the relationship is to help one another heal and learn from the situation. Throughout the interaction, the nurse empathizes with the patient as they try to understand the situation from Adam's context rather than imposing their own beliefs and values in order to develop an efficient plan of care for him. The nurse demonstrated aesthetic knowing in this scenario during nurse-client interaction. She noticed Adam's behavior of covering his wrists and gave him a blanket to make him feel more secure and comfortable. She also saw the worried look on his face and noticed that he was avoiding eye contact with her, showing signs of stress. She questioned Adam's looks of anxiousness, asking about his hobbies and what he was currently feeling. With the information that she gathered, she found out that Adam collects action figures. Wanting to help Adam be in a more comfortable environment, she found some action figures and set them up by his bed, hoping that it would make him feel more at home and open up about his struggles. When the nurse sat down with the parents, she explained scientific facts about depression and what kind of signs and symptoms are associated with it. By understanding that a person's blood sugar levels are controlled and altered based on their eating habits, this proceeded to further the understanding of the reason behind Adam's low levels and his contacts by communicating with him. Also, by knowing the early signs of suicide, which are deterioration in school performance, social withdrawal, loss of initiative, loneliness, sadness, and crying, apathy loss, sleep disturbance, and verbalization of suicidal thoughts, these signs usually occur one month before a suicidal attempt. All these signs and symptoms allow for the treatment plan that was chosen for Adam. It is important for nurses to be open-minded when trying to build a relationship with their client. Personal bias of nurses can prevent them from seeing the patient's strengths. Neglecting the strengths of a patient can impede the client's healing journey as the nurse is not able to utilize what the patient does well, but instead they may be picking at their struggles. This negative mindset can make the patient feel helpless and alone in their journey, thus unable to move forward in the healing process. Overall, having a connection with your patient will help the RN notice even the slightest changes in their patient, including both physical and behavioral.